Good day and welcome back to the Vitality Project. I'm Dr. Bob, thanks so much for joining me. Yesterday, we stopped for a moment to appreciate just how integral our being able to access resting brain is to the health and well-being of our relationships. Psy psychology says that we co-regulate one another best co-regulate, that is that we help to regulate one another's mind and emotions and body responses. We do that best when we're able to tune in uh, compassionately into one another's uh, experiences and needs. And how do we do that most reliably and most effectively? We open ourselves to resting brain. In resting brain, I've got the full uh, uh, access in my body, in my being, in my brain, in my mind, in my heart, to being able to tune into you compassionately and, and with empathy. The opposite of what I just told you is when we, or perhaps it's our loved ones, when one or the other of us is stuck in red alert brain. This is where distress uh, arises, including in relationship. And this is where we can be most easily triggered towards addictive relapse. In fact, when I ask group members in local recovery treatment uh, settings where I work, what is their number one stressor? Virtually every time for virtually every member, it is relationships. I think it's a classic case of good news, bad news. The bad news is that I can be most powerfully triggered towards relapse when there is a rupture in one of my primary relationships. Think about it. This is, we have the most skin in the game in our primary relationships. Of course, we're going to be distressed when things aren't going well. But there's good news. And the good news is this. I can actually learn skills to help me remain in resting brain even amidst, believe it or not, even amidst relationship friction or disjunction. The skills that are entailed in this, we've been summarizing here at your Vitality Project in terms of mind-body bridging. These are skills that directly apply to our being able to access and maintain resting brain, even in the midst of uh, the fire. <laughs> Uh, and these mind-body bridging skills help me not only to access calmer states of mind and body, they also ena enable me to invite my significant others into that same state of mind and body. I model it for them. I actually carry that frequency, that kind of calmness, which itself is infectious. It's actually referred to as emotional contagion in a positive way. I can do that by myself holding a center and staying grounded. The fact is, our relationships may become, I believe with committed practice, and I think for many of us, probably most of us, maybe all of us, it requires committed practice, but that our relationships may become our greatest resource in building successful long-term sobriety and living lives of fulfillment and well-being. So very, very strongly about this. So for today, I want you to do me a favor and journal about your ideal vision for your most important relationship. This is to be fun. I'd like you to name four to six qualities that you'd like to see as characteristic of your relationship. What would it be like if I could have it ideal uh, in my own mind of what I would like on a day-to-day -day basis? Let me give you an example of some things that you might think of. This is just meant to, uh, to prime the pump. You might write, we take a break when things heat up too much. We regularly send loving thoughts and wishes to one another. We let go of grudges. We don't let stuff fester too long. Instead, we bring it up before one of us simply pops. I think you get the idea. Let's see what you come up with, okay? I wish you well with this exercise. It can be a very important one to have a North Star, something that you envision as the desired aim or the desired goal for you relationally. I want to thank you again for joining me today. Please come back tomorrow. We'll be back for more. In the meantime, please stay safe, be well, take good care, and I'll see you soon.